When we think of camera design, vintage aesthetics dominate some of the most recognizable cameras in history. Cameras like the original Leica 1A from 1925, the Hasselblad 500C, which was designed in 1957, the Roloflex, folding cameras, these cameras all came from a mechanical era. Tools designed and built by trained specialists. They had an enormous amount of soul. Film photography has seen a resurgence in the last decade as an alternative to digital photography. This is a similar phenomenon in what we see in the watch industry. After decades of battery-powered quartz watches dominated the market, today we have smart watches that provide technology that is far beyond what the watch was ever initially designed to do. But just like film photography, mechanical watches have seen a strong comeback in recent years. Welcome back everyone. We're gonna do something a little bit different in this video. We're gonna be talking about a watch. Now, why would a photography channel be covering a watch, you might be asking? Well, this isn't just any watch. This watch is the first watch designed specifically with a photography complication. So if you look at the dial on this watch, you're gonna see this bezel and it's bi-directional. It has a sliding exposure scale. So this allows you to match up your film speed or your ISO setting to a set of icons that show lighting conditions from bright to low light. Once you match up your ISO to the brightness on the other side of the bezel, you're gonna see the various f-stop and shutter speed combinations. So this is the Orage Lensman 2. You may have noticed me wearing this in previous videos as I've had this on my wrist for really the last month and I absolutely love it. The industrial design of this watch even takes cues from mid-century medium format cameras from the case shape down to the typography that's actually used on the dial. But most importantly, this watch boasts some high-end specs that complement the unique photography theme design that we've got going on here. The Lensman 2 is an automatic watch that features an in-house movement. This is the Orage K2. The K2, which you can see through the exhibition case back here, is driven by a micro rotor. This escapement is a non-magnetic design. It uses a silicon hairspring escapement, wheel, and anchor. The K2 has a 72-hour power reserve and also features a GMT complication for tracking a second time zone. Each movement in a Lensman 2 is COSC certified, which means they meet the highest standard of Swiss components running with the highest level of accuracy. So each movement that goes into a watch is actually put through a series of tests to ensure that they meet the certification before they're used in a watch. This is a really time consuming process. Most watches don't actually go through it. But what it means when you've been cost certified is that you're getting one of the highest performing automatic movements being made. This speaks to the quality level that Orage is producing. So when you see Swiss made on a watch, one would probably assume that the entire watch is made in Switzerland, but that's actually not always the case and the term actually is defined by Swiss law so if you're gonna put that on a watch let's say at least 60% of that watch must be made in Switzerland mechanical watches are very complex instruments and they can be pretty expensive and difficult to manufacture entirely in-house so to speak there are a lot of watch brands that use off-the-shelf or pre-made movements by another company put it into their pre-designed watch and then stamp Swiss made on the front so this has become a little bit of a controversy in recent years how much of the watch is actually Swiss but the threshold legally is 60%. Now, Orage has an interesting advantage in their backstory. So the company has its roots in building OEM watch parts for other watch companies in Switzerland. So in the early 2000s, they decided to start the Orage brand building a watch using their own parts in-house. Today, Orage is a unique company that has an almost entire production line from engineering, design, and production that is produced in-house from T0. So in case you're wondering what the actual percentage of Swiss production is on the Lensman 2, it's 98%. Definitely Swiss made. So I mentioned the exposure complication earlier and when I show this watch to people, I actually get a lot of questions. So one is, does it actually work? Absolutely. If I'm in bright sunlight, I want to use a lower ISO setting. So for example, if I'm gonna shoot at an ISO of 100, I'll match up the 100 up with the sun icon on the dial. If I look on the opposite side of the bezel, I'll see all of the shutter speed and f-stop combinations that will work to get the correct exposure. So for example, you'll see 1 500th at f8, or if my camera supports it, I can shoot 1 8,000th of a second wide open at f1.4. 
In photography, we might refer to this as the Sunny 16 rule. So with the Sunny 16 rule, it basically states that if you're shooting outdoors in bright sunlight, you're going to match the closest shutter speed to the ISO. So let's say it's 100, it would be 1 1 25th, and you're gonna stop down to F16, and that gives you correct exposure at F16. Obviously, if I open up the aperture, we're going to have to tighten up or speed up the shutter speed to match, but that's the idea. The Lensman 2 features an entire slide rule that gives you all the lighting conditions, not just bright sunlight, so it's very cool. Which brings us to the second question that I commonly get is, is this actually practical to use? I mean, my camera has a light meter. Well, I'd argue that it's no more practical than diving watches that you see all the time with the timer on the bezel or even the decompression scale in the middle. Diving is all computerized now, so the design is actually more of a throwback and generally most people who wear diving watches don't do any diving past their desk. So you can maintain that this is the same for photographers, but in the 1950s, this bezel would have been used regularly. Most cameras in those days didn't have a light meter. I own several vintage cameras that actually have indications written on the camera to assist in getting the right exposure. My Roloflex MX EVS even goes to the extent of detailed drawings of lighting situations, even judging by the shadow length of the sun to suggest the correct exposure settings. So sure, this is eclipsed by technology today. I mean, every digital camera, including your smartphone, have metering built in. You don't even have to think about it usually. But if you look at this in the context of design, it really complements this watch beautifully. The entire piece is a nod to mid-century medium format photography, and I think it really works. In fact, it's kind of surprising that none of the mid-century watchmakers thought to do an exposure complication on a bezel. It's actually really cool. So some specs on the Lensman 2. The case on this watch is made of grade 5 titanium for the exo case, which is the polished area, anodized aluminum for the inner case, which is the matte black part. The dimensions are extremely wearable with a diameter of 39 millimeters. There is a 45.8 millimeter lug to lug, and the lug to lug is certainly more prominent in this design over, say, a dive watch, but it wears very well on my 6.5 inch wrist. It is not clunky at all, and it is extremely comfortable. I think a lot of that deals with the thinness of this watch. This watch is only about 10.3 millimeters thick, which is very impressive considering the movement and the exhibition case back. The watch also features a signed crown with the Orage H on it. It is a push-pull with three positions, and it is made of grade five titanium as well, matching the case. Now, the dial is my favorite feature on here, and it features a nice mid-century inspired look down to the typography. It is very organized, considering how much information is actually on this dial. It doesn't ever feel cluttered. It is extremely legible. So the bezel has all the photography-related measurements that are going to match up with the lighting icons on the outer dial. Inside the icons, we get minute marker indices, followed by 24-hour marking index numbers. So for those of you that are not familiar with a GMT watch, this is a watch that has a second hour hand. And on this watch, it's gonna be the short yellow lollipop style hand. This indicates the hours on a 24-hour scale instead of a 12. So your standard hands all operate in the conventional 12-hour cycle, while this one moves much slower on a 24-hour scale. You can also independently set this hour hand. This is the cool part. So if you pull the crown out to the second position, twisting away from you will jump the GMT hand in one hour increments. This is a collar style GMT and it makes it really easy to track a second time zone. Since it's not a 24 hour hand, you won't need to guess whether it's AM or PM. As you can see, the front crystal is a domed sapphire type with five layers of anti-reflection coating. The case back also features an anti-reflection coated sapphire crystal with an engraved case back that reads, you don't take a photograph, you make it. Now the watch I've been showing you guys is the standard edition. It's gonna come in two options. So there's the black dial, which I'm using in this video. There's also a yellow dial option if you want some color on your watch. The Lensman 2 also comes in a limited edition version, which is a collaboration with British photographer and filmmaker, Brian Griffith. If you're not familiar with Brian, he is incredible. He's a photographer who's had an amazingly impressive career. His iconic portraits of musicians in the 1980s, such as Depeche Mode, R.E.M., Iggy Pop, Peter Gabriel, as well as his work on Return of the Jedi have earned him considerable visibility and critical acclaim. In 1988, he published the book Work, alongside a one-man show at the National Portrait Gallery in London. In 1992, the British Guardian named Griffin the photographer of the decade for his portrait work. The very special Brian Griffin edition is limited to only 100 pieces, and it comes with a silver dial, and the micro rotor is made of PT950 platinum. The case back is also engraved with Believe in Your Light, which is one of Brian's quotes. Purchasers of the Brian Griffith limited edition will be able to choose from one of four limited edition box categories, 
designated as music, film, portrait, and artist selection. Each photo box is going to contain four images curated from Griffin's archive. They will be signed and numbered by the artist himself. Arage also involved its watch community, which is really cool, in the curating of these images by vote prior to the first pre-order taking place. So this watch is available on Arage's website. Orders are expected to start shipping in quarter four of this year. So Arage have started their pre-orders in three different windows. So the first window, which has already passed, was the VIP window, and that was where you could get it at the cheapest price. It went up slightly for the early bird window, which was next, and today actually is what they call the Sleepy Bird window. Now, the price has gone up, but they have cut a special deal for Art of Photography viewers. So if you were really interested in this watch, go check it out and you can use offer code AOP on checkout. It's offer code AOP. And that's gonna get you the watch at the original VIP price, which is very cool. Been wearing this watch in previous videos and when you see it in future videos, you'll know exactly why. This is probably the ultimate watch for photographers. So anyway, thank you guys for checking this out. Go check out Orage and the Lensman 2, and I will see you guys in the next video. Until then, later.